Hi everyone, Tyler Manning here, NPC and IFPB Pro League Vice President. And today we're going to be doing the New York Pro Recap of the Open Men's Bodybuilding. And this is presented by Uprising, powered by Mid45. And to start out, I got to say, what an incredible show. I think the quality of guys that showed up here was really, really good. Even into the second call out, really the lineup of 5th through 10th place could be another show's first call out. That's how good I think the lineup here was. Um, you know, a lot of the European bodybuilders that came over, I thought brought great packages as well. I'm not going to break them down, but, you know, I just want to say I think they look great. I hope this is a sign for the years that's going on that we're going to see a lot of competitive shows and competitive lineups. I really think that we are. So very excited about this one. The top four all looked amazing, I thought. Really, obviously, the headliner was Nick and Martin. I think Martin transformed from Detroit. I was I obviously judged him in Detroit. I thought he still looked pretty good there. I was impressed with the improvements that he made physique wise, just seeing him in Detroit. But he came in here with I think what you would call a perfect bodybuilding peak. This guy's conditioning separation was next level. Basically almost his hamstrings were cross triated. That's how deep the cuts were on him and the detail that he brought out in his physique, which made him look way denser than he did in Detroit. Completely transformed his look. Then we have Nick. I think Nick brought a good package here, but this was definitely not the best Nick Walker we've seen. And I think it's important to highlight that really this is a show that it's worth making the drive to, making the trip to go see and go see in person because Looking at, you know, these GoCo videos, looking at, you know, iPhone pictures taken of the stage with the backlights that help enhance everything on the iPhones, even professional stage pictures. Some, some people photograph and video and it makes them seem more conditioned than they actually are. I mean, this happened in many of the divisions throughout the show. So this is a show that it really helps being at the show and seeing it live and obviously how exciting it was. You can't beat it. So hopefully it kind of encourages more people to attend the shows at the very least. But yeah, I think Nick's conditioning was good. It wasn't definitely what we're used to seeing from him conditioning wise, but it was enough that got the job done. And now we'll go into it uh, pose by pose and I'll break it down for you guys. So between Nick and Martin, I think many of these poses were extremely close. Really, in person, there was no blowout either way on any pose. Even with Nick having, you know, the additional size and more size to his physique and freakiness, Martin brought a level of detail and refinement through his conditioning that made him hold his own at the very least in every pose. And really looking through it, you can make arguments on almost every pose between these guys, especially being up right up on them on the stage. So first up is the front double bicep. Again, this pose, I think, is a very close pose. So for Nick, you obviously have amazing arms, freaky arms. He still exhibits a taper, right, with, the, with flaring lats down into his waist. And while his quads from the front aren't the biggest, they have good Good enough separation in detail, and I think actually he did improve his quad size from the front from the last time we saw him. However, with Nick here, I do think that his waist got wider. So overall flow of the pose for Nick, I think, is hurt by, by his waist being a little bit wider here. I think it kind of minimizes the improvements that he did make to his quads and his sweep from the front. Because when the waist is wider, that makes the legs not look as big and the sweep not look as big. So then we go ahead and look at Martin. Martin exhibits a really, really good taper. I think his arms are about, you know, I wouldn't say his arms are weak because I'd say they're about average in size. But his inner arm, inner arm detail here is definitely a weaker part of the pose for him. He doesn't have that same separation and detail that Nick has to his arms, obviously. Then we go down to the lower body. I think Martin has great quads. They have very good shape to them, good separation, good sweep from the front here. And, and looking in person, that conditioning throughout the quads, while Nick has a little bit of that freak factor look, Martin's lines in the legs and size of the legs are very, very clean. So overall, with flow of the pose, you look at 
you know, size, symmetry, fullness, conditioning. I personally think Martin took the front double bicep because of the overall flow to the pose. His taper is awesome. His lower body and upper body were very balanced. I think the main thing going forward to him is trying to get a little more of that inner arm detail that we see in the front double bicep. But because of this, when you look at the difference between the waistlines and the flow of the pose, while Nick takes overall muscularity here, I don't think he wins any other part of that. So start out, I give Martin the front double bicep just by a little bit, one nothing. Next up, we have the front lat spread. Now, again, I think this pose wasn't the closest pose out of all the poses, but it still wasn't a blowout. We all know that this is Nick's weakest pose. I think he's gone a little bit better at hitting it, but he still needs to workshop this and find a way just to get the lats flaring out more to exhibit better taper. A lat spread, it's also harder to hide your actual waistline. Uh, we see this with other bodybuilders as well. So it's harder to hide your real waistline on the front lat spread. So that's probably why it's a little bit harder for him to hit. Uh, he, need, he just needs to show more width and get that waistline down. Those are the main improvements for that. Again, he does that. And you'll see the improvements that he made in his legs. Obviously, he he looks good through the arms and the shoulders. He could he could use a little bit more thickness to his chest here as well. But I also think he could even display that just a little bit better if he can hit the pose a little bit better. Now we go to Martin. Martin does show taper here. He has a smaller waistline. His outer arms, right? So we're looking at the outside now of his arms and shoulders have way more detail and depth to them than he does through the inner arms when his arms are raised in the front double bicep. So I think he displays good detail here. He also could use a little bit more thickness through the chest here, but Martin doesn't open up his lats even all the way on this pose. I think Martin could be hitting the front lat spread much, much better, a little bit more arched to his back. His chest will look a little bit fuller. His taper will look a little bit better. But overall, when you're comparing him right next to Nick, he does exhibit all the features uh, much more that we look for in this pose. So I think this was uh, pretty clear, pretty clearly a Martin pose. He's up 2-0. Next up is the side chest pose. Now, I think this is a pose that basically was almost a toss-up between these two. And here's why. Nick's side chest pose is very strong. Nick has a great side leg. He has huge quads and huge hamstrings from the side. A good balance, obviously, between the two. He has amazing arms and amazing shoulders. He is able to pose the, to bring out a little bit more of that chest thickness that I think he has added over the years. Before, he didn't really have much thickness to his chest. He's definitely improved that a lot. The one thing that Nick does is he uses his back shoulder and pushes over in the pose a lot. And he can get away with it by doing it a little bit because he really has huge shoulders, huge round shoulders. But when you do that, you're taking away that width across the top that you need to be displaying in this pose. Now, he was hitting it, I think, better at some points. And then at some points, he was really pushing the shoulder over. When he's really pushing the shoulder over, that hurt him because Martin hits this pose absolutely perfectly. His shoulders are level. They're square. He looks very wide across the top. You're seeing that chest pushed over. You're seeing density and striations through the chest. You're seeing thickness through the chest. Again, Martin's outer arm detail is not bad. He has good shoulders. He has good shoulder to arm ratio. His side leg is great. He has a good balance between his quads and his hamstrings. While from the side, I think leg size wise, it is a little bit smaller than Nick's. It's not much. It's really not much. And Martin's conditioning. So in person, his lines and the separation in his legs and everything basically on his body here was crazy. So when you're looking and going back and forth, we pose these guys multiple times, right? At prejudging and at finals. We're watching every single time they pose. It went back, for me personally, it went back and forth. We pose them one time. I thought Nick hit the pose a little bit better. The overall muscularity was shining through. But then at other times, he was forcing the back shoulder uh, across too much, taking away some of that width up top. Then my eyes would go to Martin. I'd say, I think Martin's winning this pose. So I can see how judges would look at this pose. And this could be a toss-up pose. I mean, this was a one-point show. So the panel was split almost right down the middle, you know, three to two on, on which bodybuilder they thought won. And I think this pose is a big reason part of it. I think if Nick's able to hit the pose a little bit better. And again, I think... Overall waist control, we're also looking at in this pose. So you have to remember that. I think Nick did a good.
good job, but not a great job of doing that. Again, on some of the poses as we're posing them through during pre-judging and finals, it was getting lost just a little bit. But at the end of the day, Nick came back to the finals much improved, I thought, with uh, separation and conditioning than he was in the morning. And at the end of the day, just the overall muscularity is really, really hard to beat. And Nick edges this pose out ever so slightly to make it two to one. The next pose is the back double bicep. And I think this was a pose that in person uh, was much closer than it would look through the video or through the pictures. So especially at pre-judging, I thought Nick was definitely uh, the conditioning was not as good as it was at the finals. The lines weren't as deep. The separation wasn't as deep and his back was definitely a little bit flat. So again, overall muscularity, you see Nick's shoulders and arms from the back. I think his overall back has definitely also come up. It's a body part that's been improved over the last couple of years. And then obviously he has big legs from the back, great hamstrings. You're, you're seeing great leg width from the back and the conditioning was good. Now with Martin, his arms and shoulders from the back are pretty good, but obviously they're not to the level of Nick's. His back itself was displaying good depth to it, very good depth to it in separation to really make it pop on stage. However, next to Nick, you see he doesn't have that same width in this back double bicep pose. Then we go down to the lower body and really Martin's lower body from the back was crazy. He like I said, his hamstrings were basically cross strided. The leg width he was displaying, the detail, the sharpness was out of this world. So lower body wise, I actually think Martin was displaying better lower body, especially when compared, you know, with Nick. But in the upper body, Nick's arms and shoulders are definitely a good bit better than Martin's. And then the overall back itself, well, Nick's was definitely on the flat side in the morning, but overall, he just has a better shape and he does have what looks to be just a little bit more muscle back there. So Nick's taper from the back is great, especially in this back double bicep pose. So I give this pose, but not by a lot, to Nick to make it two to two. Next up is the back lat spread pose. So this was a pose that I thought was pretty clearly for Nick. Nick has improved how he's hit this pose dramatically over the last couple of years. I actually still think his lats can come out a little bit more. I think this pose, he still has a little bit more to give. But overall, again, you're seeing the width and you're also seeing the thickness of his back when he's in this back lat spread. Again, he has crazy big legs from the back. Conditioning was good. The hamstrings are in. The hamstrings are there. The leg width is there. Overall, this has become, which was what, one of his weaker poses into, I think, one of his stronger poses. For Martin... Martin was really rounding his spine too much on this. So you're seeing it flatten out his back a lot. Not only is it flattening out his back, but it's also taking away from how wide he's going to be able to look in this pose too. So while the lower body was in and the lower body was great, I think he was making uh, a pretty sizable mistake with how he was hitting this back lat spread. And that's what made this a clear pose for Nick. So now we're up to three to two for Nick.